Uh, Professor Tribe, uh, Andrew Weissman still with us here in the studio. We all uh, shared public doubts about how Merrick Garland was handling this before he appointed Jack Smith. Uh, what do you what's your sense of how Merrick Garland has handled this case thus far? Well, I think the appointment of Jack Smith was a brilliant stroke. His experience at The Hague made it clear that he was ready for this, and he's proceeded as fast as he could. I do think that Merrick Garland did not proceed as fast as he might have. I think much of what many of us fear, namely that this will drag on, that even if there is a verdict, a conviction, for example, there could be an appeal that would last into the next presidency, and if the next presidency is held either by Donald Trump or by one of his acolytes or by virtually any Republican, there is the horrible prospect that this will all be wiped away and that it will be relegated to a kind of historic footnote. It will never be just a footnote because, as your guests have all correctly said, this is monumental. But unlike some of the other monumental cases, like the ones that Neil Katyal mentioned, Dred Scott, Marbury v. Madison, Brown v. Board, none of those were subject to being simply erased by the results of a political election. What is quite unique here is that however brilliant and however well-grounded in facts and law this indictment is, and I certainly agree it couldn't have been better, and I agree with Andrew Weissman that it skirts the First Amendment problems that might have existed if it were focused on incitement. However brilliant it is, it is subject to being wiped out. And that really makes me think about how vulnerable and fragile our legal system is, how slow it is, how even the fact that the dramatic picture you paint when you read this indictment, the fact that all of that is going to be hidden from the American public unless we can somehow convince the judges with power to make the decision that this should be a televised trial, which I think it should be. It can all be hidden, and that points up the ways in which our legal system is vulnerable. The rule of law is powerful. It can prevail. It can preserve democracy if this trial is allowed to reach a firm conclusion. And I think the conclusion that the facts and law point to is a conviction in all likelihood. But if it goes too slowly, or if there are interferences, or if, as Andrew Weissman says, politics overtakes it all, and the ultimate court of public opinion, if that includes people who just don't care, who basically say, yes, he did it, but we don't care, we don't trust our institutions enough to care about preserving them, then we're in real trouble. So we have a system that might go too slowly, that might be too opaque, and a system that is not at all guaranteed to triumph over politics. So that's my overall view of where we are.